sure this is going. I believe it is, but let's just make sure. Boop doop doo. Give me just a second. I believe I'm already going live right now. Come on now. Pretty certain I'm live. Oh, yeah, I am live. Pretty okay. I'm live. Yeah, I can hear Michael. All right, cool. All right, so let's talk about how to make static objects. Um, I've sort of already done it here, but it's uh, fairly simple. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to... Um, we'll just remove all this and we'll start over. All right, so it's, uh, it's kind of complicated and it's going to take a little bit of time for me to talk about it. So um, I'm assuming what you want to do is place static objects, in, in this case planes, and have the players interact with those static objects supposedly by shooting them, and then the players should get some sort of uh, notification when they've destroyed it or damaged it or something like that. So that's kind of what we're trying to do here. All right, so the first thing is is uh, you do not want to use the planes group in our MCUs, okay? The planes group is actually for um, making planes for AI or for players, okay? So we, we don't want to use those. We can, but um, for performance reasons, we want to use blocks when it comes to static objects. So what I'm doing now in the blocks group is I'm looking for um, some static objects. In this case, let's do, uh, we'll do like the flag three. So what I typically like to do is I like to uh, click on all the different lag threes here, and, and an air filter might also have like, um, I don't know, it might have some, an ammo thing, and it might have a barracks, and it might have a hangar, all right? So then, uh, this is sort of like my paintbrush. So what I'm gonna do is I would grab one of these and then paste them, and I'll explain here in just a second. First, the, and, and why I'm doing this. So first, I'm just gonna label these. So this is lag three, and its damage is 1500. Now, I don't know if that's the right durability, but I'm assuming it is. And then this is lag three with a netting, and uh, same thing, damage is 1500, or durability is 1500, sorry. And this is a uh, lag three with open open one and same thing fifteen hundred and this one is lag three uh, op open two something it's probably something to open about okay so there's that and then this is what this is an ammo block and uh, ammo blocks, they have bunkers and stuff like that. So we'll just say 4,000. And this is a barracks. So it's like a building, so we'll do a barracks. And damage for that. The building is probably 3,000. I don't know. It could be 3,500. Okay, and then um, last one here is our hangar. So hangar. And we'll do 6,000 for the hangar. Make it really crazy, hard to destroy. Okay, so this is my paintbrush, so to speak, of what I want to do. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab one of these guys and uh, I'm going to paste them into our little air field. So, uh, and I'll show you here in just a second why that's important. So the ones with the netting here, we'll put you here, another net one, and I'm just I control C one of my paintbrush objects, and then I control V for pasting it over there. All right, and then uh, let's see, maybe they're working on them over here. They're working on this one and that one. Maybe this one over here needs to be worked on, and maybe there's a broken one here and one there too. And then, uh, well, what did I grab? One, two, three, net, 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 net. Oh, and then of course, these guys are, these guys over here are taking off, and maybe these guys are taking off too. Okay, so then, uh, so why did I do this? Why am I doing this sort of copy and paste? So if I go back to my lag three, where is it at? Um, it's, uh, it's, oh no, they're not in alphabetical order, are they? Be nice if they were, make things easier. So let's see, where is it at? 
Blah, blah, blah. Did I just pass it up? I totally passed it up like four times now. Oh, you're static. IL2, lag three. Okay, so if I if I was to do something like this, like grab one, paste it, grab one, paste it, grab one, paste it. Okay, now look, they don't have the correct naming convention and the durability is wrong. Whereas when I grabbed one for my paintbrush, so I do copy over here and paste over here, the, the naming convention is correct. So you can see I have lag threes and I have lag threes with nets. Lag threes that are open two and lag threes that are open one. They not only have the correct naming convention, but they also have the correct durability. So super easy to place objects down. All right. So um, just for shits and giggles here, let's go ahead and place some hangers. We'll place one here, one there. I don't know, one over here. Looks good. Maybe there's some barracks. Boom, boom, boom. And of course, you can go. Uh, uh, the next thing you need to do after you have everything in place is uh, delete your paintbrush and then um, select all your static objects and press set on ground. And I like to press it a couple times just to make sure because sometimes this slip doesn't work. And then we'll just double check. And what I've done here is um, toggle the camera and we're just double checking to make sure everything is placed on the ground. And it is. And uh, some of these objects, such as this guy here, is not turned the right way, which is fine. You know, you can go and make it all pretty. But let's assume that you've already done that. You've all made it all look real nice and pretty, and everything's good to go. And so how I'm doing this, I'm left-click to select one of these guys. I'm holding down Control, and then I can move it around. Or if I hold down Shift, I can, uh, sorry, not, Control rotates it and shift moves it wherever. And if, you can do that in any view. So I can do it here, same thing, right? And move it around. And then in this view too, same thing. Of course you can't see what it looks like in that view, but that's fine. Okay, so once your static objects are sort of placed and everything looks good to go, um, then what you wanna do is, um, you're gonna wanna make some of the objects a linked entity. Now, typically, I don't make all of my objects a linked entity. I want the players to feel like if they destroy 80 or 90 percent of the stuff, then uh, that's good enough, and they've completed the objective. They've done a great job and served Stalin, and everything's wonderful. Or, uh, in this case, uh, serve the you know the invaders of Russia. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select just a couple of them. We'll say like eight of them. So this one, maybe this one. And I'm going to try to select the things that are sort of like in the middle. And, and bigger objects too, like this hanger. So we got one, two, three, four. This hanger makes five. That hanger makes six. One of these guys, seven. And uh, I don't know, this big old barracks, eight. Okay, so I'm going to do there. So I'm, I've, uh, what I've done is I've control left click on all of them to select multiple, right? So you can control left click to select multiple here or just deselect it. Uh, from there, I'm going to right click, I'm going to group these objects up, and I'm just going to call them dynamic objects, and we'll come back to this in a second. And I know I spelled that wrong, it doesn't matter, we're going to come back to it in just one second. Then the static objects, they're set, they're done, I don't need to do anything else to these guys. So um, what I'm going to do is I've left clicked, I've selected them, set on ground again just to make sure because sometimes it doesn't work. And then I'm going to uh, left click this dynamic objects group so I can deselect it. Then I'm going to uh, right click again. I'm going to group up these st static objects. I'm going to just call this airfield static objects. Okay. Now that's set. But these dynamic objects aren't set. These are the ones that we're going to make linked entities. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, select the dynamic objects group and I'm just going to ungroup it for now because we're going to work inside this group. I'm also going to go to object filter and you see uh, this group right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uncheck this. Now the group is gone. So now I don't have to worry about, oops, sorry. Sorry, 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 let's go back to this. So now when I do this sort of selection, I'm not selecting the group that's there. It's kind of nice, so you know, see how the group is not selected versus now the group is selected. So I'm just turning that off um, so it doesn't get selected accidentally. Okay, so I select all these guys. I'm gonna make them linked entities. I'm just clicking this guy here. And then uh, from there, they're Russian, so we're going to uh, click into the advanced properties, and we're going to change the country from neutral to Russia. Now they're all blue, which is the wrong color, right? Germany is blue and Russia is red. It's inverted in the, in the editor for whatever reason. Um, 
Okay, so that that's that, but now we need to sort of set sort of um, some conditions here and, and uh, for events that fire off. So what I'm doing, I'm going to left click this guy, and we're going to look at the events. So you can see um, we have an on damage event, on killed, and on move to. Now, these objects aren't movable, right? They're not going to be moved. So this event doesn't really need to worry. But can the objects be killed? Absolutely. Can they be damaged? Absolutely. So we can add events for these, OK, and logic behind them. So let's talk about um, on attack or, or on damage, sorry, on a damaged event. So when the, the Germans come and they f attack some of these objects here, we want to notify the allies that, hey, you've, you've not defended these well, and they're not, you need to come and protect them. Um, so in, in some servers like Wings of Liberty, they don't notify allies, into, uh, or sorry, they don't notify the friendly pilots until two or three minutes after the enemies have attacked it. Now, I personally don't like that. I'd rather be notified immediately and then have a two to three minute delay and notify me again if the enemy is still attacking that objective and someone hasn't done something about it, right? And you'll see uh, oftentimes, you know, especially Russian pilots with an IL-2s with so many rockets and bombs, they'll stay on a target for nine, ten minutes. And so if no one's there, you'll get notified two or three times. Um, and so we want to be able to do that. So I want to notify the friendlies immediately and then not notify them again for about three minutes. So let's talk about how to do that. So I'm going to go to the MCU's group. We're going to do some uh, translations and triggers and stuff. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to set down a, uh, a little timer here, and we're going to rename this. Remember, you want to rename everything that you possibly can so that it uh, helps identify. And uh, so what I'm doing is I'm just saying timer, three seconds, and I'm just going to give a three-second delay here. Uh, when I, and then I'm selecting all these guys, all my static objects that are linked entities. I'm right-clicking. I'm saying add on damage event to the three-second timer. So basically what I've done is I said, anytime any of these objects, any one of them, get damaged 50%, then send, send notification to this three-second timer. Okay, then three seconds later, something else will happen. But just so you understand kind of how this works. Um, this all, all the on damage stuff is being sent right here to the three second timer. So then what I want to do is I want to have an on and off switch. So I'm going to grab another timer here and I'm just going to call this the on, on off switch. Okay. And this won't have any time on it at all, but basically it's just sort of like a gate. Um, if you've ever played Minecraft or something like that, you need redstone. This is basically a gateway. So um, I, this, if this is off, then anything past it will not fire. And if this is on, then anything past it will fire. So after three seconds have passed, I'm going to turn turn on our gate. Or I'm going to uh, send a notification to the gate. Now I'm not turning it on or turning it off. I'm just sending a notification to the gate. Oh, and I forgot to mention, the reason I set this three seconds timer is, is because let's say a, a bomber comes down and he, hit and he bombs the hangar. I want to give a little bit of a delay, maybe you know three seconds or so, enough time for them to sort of pull up and get out of the battle, without um, you know the server getting upset and lagging the player out or whatever, right? Uh, the mission hanging, something like that. We want to give three or four seconds so that something bad happens. Uh, the player is not really adversely affected. That's why there's a three second timer here. Okay. Anyway, three seconds fires off, then on off, it gets a notification on off switch saying, hey, do some other logic after this switch. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, first thing I want you to do is I want you to fire off another timer, and this timer is going to be three minutes. And I also want you to um, fire off this off button, and notice I selected a deactivate MCU off button. And, um, and and another timer. This timer here is going to be about two seconds. Okay, and I'm going to go into it and I'm going to set it two seconds. Okay, so <clears throat> on a switch is being notified. It's immediately going to send a notification to three minutes, and then it's also going to send a notification to our off button. 
and it's going to send a notification to our two-second timer over here. Okay, so immediately, immediately, it does all three of these all at once. Um, then the off button is going to send another notification. And by the way, I'm doing Shift T if you didn't know. Back to the switch to turn it off. So once all three of these fire, it immediately turns the switch off. Okay, then. Then uh, two seconds later, we'll go to this one. Two seconds later, I want to send, um, this is allies, so we'll say allies message on damaged. And inside here, we'll go neutral, no, allies, yes, axis, no, about 15 seconds or so, font size 25. And since it's allies, we'll put it on the right. And since it's sort of only for friendlies, we'll put it at the bottom. And we'll make it a yellow message. We'll say, hey, hey, dummy, dumb pilots, your airfield is under attack. Want to do something about it? Come on, get in there. Attack. I don't know. Something like that. We'll just leave it as, hey, airfield, hey, dumb pilots, your airfield is under attack. Perfect. Okay, so after two seconds, we're going to notify the player. Um, so the button is off. So if the, another one comes in, the button is still off, right? The button is still off. And another one comes in, the button is still off. So nothing will fire past this right now. Okay. Um, so I'm going to grab a uh, activate MCU. And I'm going to call this the on button. Hopefully you can see what's going on here. So after three minutes, send a message to the on button, which in turn turns the switch back on. Right? And so now if three minutes pass and then they this gets damaged 50% or any of these get damaged 50%, then the switch is turned back on and immediately fires one, two, and three all at once. And then the off button turns off. Two seconds later, the message is sent. And three minutes later, the on button turns the switch back on. That is very simple logic, in my opinion, on how to, uh, um, sorry, how to do an on damage event just to the ally players. Only the allies will get that message, right? The axis would not get that. So what I'm doing now is I'm just doing a little bit of cleanup, clean it up a little bit here, and um, I'm going to group these objects up. So I'm, I've selected all of them. Right click, group. We'll call this on damage. Yeah, we'll do airfield on damage logic. Perfect. You notice I can't see groups because I still have the group filter off. So there it is. And I normally leave my messages off so out of groups so that I can sort of fix that later. This is logic. This probably will never change. If anything, I might change the three-minute timer or something like that to like three minutes and 30 seconds or something. But otherwise, this logic is probably not going to change at all. So now I'm gonna, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to move this sort of stuff out of the way. Just go over there. That's done. If they get damaged, only notify the allies. Now we want to do, if they get destroyed, send an event to everybody. Uh, so it's sort of a different topic, but uh, same concept. Um, so what I highly recommend you do here is you go to, and I'm in your thread right now, go to the Mission Maker uh, um, thread. And from there, you're going to go to the IL2 Mission Server Manual, excuse me, and you're going to download the Sample Missions Group if you haven't already. Okay. Once you've done that, you're going to go to File, Import, and here you can see here I've extracted out my Sample Missions Group. From there, we have our groups, and from there, I am looking for the damage display switch. Now, this is a pretty cool group that Jim has created. So I'm going to go on my outliner here. That's this guy right here, and it may look like this. If so, then just hit the plus sign to make it minus. What I'm looking for is my damage display switch. I just left-clicked it, right-click, move camera to object. There it is right there. I'm going to bring it over here so we can work on it. And I am going to right click and ungroup it. Okay, so the way this works is sometimes players are very clever, and I'm just cleaning this up a little bit so we can understand what's happening. 
sometimes players are very clever and they work together. And let's say you and I flying together and I destroy this hangar and at the exact same time you destroy the slag three. Now the server, at least in the past, doesn't know what to do. And it may not accept both of those uh, on de uh, destroyed events at the, at the same time. So then the mission hangs because you, this never, this sort of like eight ta targets here never get destroyed completely. And this happens when you have like 150 targets in one location and stuff like that. Okay, so what Jim's done is he said, um, as damage comes in, wait five milliseconds for each type of damage. You can see here five, 10, 15, 20 milliseconds. And, uh, and that's not even a second, right? That's a millisecond. But it's enough to, uh, enough delay to allow the server to get all the damage coming in all at once. And this is especially true for um, big um, block objects that have multiple pieces tied to it, such as like, I don't know, a country block or something, right? So something like this, it's a big piece. Um, turn the camera on so you can see. So like if, if we destroy this and this and this and this and this, we want it to count as one object destroyed. And, uh, and so you can say, send a notification here instead of a bunch of sub tiny objects in there. Um, okay, so that's neither here nor there. Just trying to explain the logic. And you, of course, you can add more to it by you know doing this sort of thing and adding uh, five more seconds for each one. But you also have to come to these guys here and modify the counters. So if you so right now it's at eight, you add one more, it'd have to be nine here. And it would maybe you would do instead of six, it would be seven, right? It's like two, four, six, and eight. For twenty five percent damage, fifty, seventy five, and hundred percent damage. Alright, so back to this part of this uh, logic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click. I'm sorry. I'm going to select each one of these um, static objects. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say unkilled number one, and then this one will be number two, and this one will be number three, and number four, and number. Oops. Make sure I only select one. Kill number five and number six. Number seven. And I missed one. This one are number eight. I'm killed. Perfect. Okay, so now the damage comes in and all the damage is collected here. And then from there, we're going to notify the player via icons that, hey, you've, the airfield is not damaged, the airfield is 25% damaged, the airfield is 50% damaged, 75% damaged, and of course, the airfield objective is destroyed. So I'm going to go to my MCUs group. I'm going to go to um, translate icon right here. I'm going to grab an icon, and uh, I'm going to rename it. We're going to call this airfield 0%. Zero damage or zero percent damage. Blech, like that. Okay. And then I'm gonna go to the advanced properties and I'm gonna change the icon ID to um al uh, allies are red, so I'm gonna use an attack one. And uh, Germans are blue, so that would be like these cover guys. So what we're looking for is attack bombers. Uh, attack enemy bombers flight. And I want both the allies and axis to see it. In this case, we can also let the neutral team see it as well. So if you haven't selected a side, you can see this as well. Um, so we'll hit OK. And there it is. It's red like we want. So I'm going to uh, copy and paste another one of these guys. And we're going to convert this one to 25. Now what we want is uh, the, the first one, as soon as the mission starts, it's enabled. And that's fine. It's there. People can see it. It's perfect. But we don't want this one to be seen, right? So we're going to disenable that one. And then I'm going to grab another one. We, we're going to change that to 50. It's the same thing. I don't want them to see it. So it's disabled initial, initially when the mission starts. And then 75. Uh, 75. There we go. Type in. It works sometimes. And then, of course, airfield is destroyed. Okay. And these icons, like before, are not enabled. The only one that's enabled when the mission starts is our 0% damage. So let's talk about this logic again. Um, one of these guys or a couple of these guys get damaged. I think it needs two. Let's check. 
two. So two of these, two of these, two out of these eight objects get destroyed. It sends a notification to this counter, and of course it sends it actually to all the counters, right? This one's at four. But anyway, it sends a notification to this counter. Two is what this counter requires. So then it fires off these guys. So this one is a is a disable. So we're going to disable, right? This one is enabled when the mission starts, but now we're disabling it, making it disappear. And then we're going to remember, and by the way, remember this one was not enabled, so we're going to enable this one now. So basically we're saying this one disappears and this one appears, right? And then when the players destroy four of the eight objects, make this guy disappear and make this one appear. And the same thing for when they destroy six of the objects make the 50% damage icon go away, and make the 75 turn on. And same thing for if they destroy all eight objects, make the 75 disappear, and the only one that should be visible is the destroyed object. And by the way, if I turn it off, if I turn this one off, then it won't turn back on unless I turn it on again, right? And in this case, I'm not turning it on again at all. All right, so that looks good. Um, now I'm going to stack these on top of each other so that they uh, it looks to the player like the icon. Like the icon doesn't change; it's just that the numeric value change. Um, so it, for the player, it looks good for us. So we need to stack them. So what I'm going to do is, and I've talked about this before, is I'm going to copy the X position, grab these guys, and I'm going to paste that X position, and then I'm going to grab this again, copy the Z, and paste the Z. Now they're all on top of each other. So then I selected all of them. I'm going to right click and group those objects up. And we'll call this airfield health icons. Um, so then we want the player to be able to see this. So I'm going to put this sort of like right in the middle of the airfield. So as soon as the game starts, the mission loads, they'll see that 0% airfield health icon. And because it's red, Germans will hopefully know that, hey, I need to attack it, and Russians will hopefully know that I need to defend it. And of course, you can add that in your mission briefing, you know, all here. Um, Germans, not Hermans, Germans. Germans <laughs> attack airfield. Field. Oh, what can I type? Airfield. Russians defend airfield. Perfect. Not the best, but you get the idea. Okay, so we can add more logic. We can add more things to this to make it even better. Okay, um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, we've notified the player via icons, but let's also notify the player via um, uh, MCU message. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, put a little trigger timer. We're going to do T three seconds. Remember to name all of your objects, or you're going to totally get lost when you're trying to fix stuff. Uh, and then from there, I'm going to select this 25% damage one, and I'm going to say, when this when this fires off, send a notification to this three-second timer. Okay, and then from there, translate subtitle. I'll just do um, on, let's see, 25% damage message, 25% damage, something like that. And then, oops, and then uh, we're going to not notify neutral, but we are going to tell the allies and the Axis, both teams, we're going to have a 15-second duration. Font size is 25. That's fine. And since this is an ally message, I'm going to put it on the right side. And since everybody can see it, I'm also going to put it at the top. Now, that's just how I do things. It's not necessarily how you have to do things. And I like to match the color. Um, Oops, I didn't mean two zeros. The color of the um, actual icon to the color of the subtitle text. So in this case, it's 134.00. And then uh, we're going to say uh, airfield has been 25% damaged. Okay. So then I, I grab both these guys, duplicate them by Control C and Control V, rename this to 50% damage. And then when this one fires off, the 50% damage counter, send a message three seconds, and then tell them that it's been about 60, 50% damage. And then the same thing for this guy. 
75. And one more. By the way, this is exactly what mission designers do all day long. Message destroy. Oh, you know what? I don't know if I changed this to 75, did I? Nope. Airfield has been certified damage, and this one airfield has been destroyed. Okay, and then also we need to connect it here. All right, that looks good. So let's clean this up a little bit. This right here, this guy right here, this one right here, this one right here. These guys a little bit closer. This guy a little bit closer, and blah, 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 blah. That one a little bit closer. And it could use a lot more cleanup, but that's fine. I'm gonna, so now uh, we have uh, our on destroyed thing. Now, of course, what we can also do is on this three second timer, so we can add a. Um, I'll just do it real quick. Another, we'll just do other logic for mission objective complete. Okay, of course it doesn't save it. But basically the idea is when when they've, once the player has destroyed all the objects, you want to do some other logic that I don't even want to talk about, about for, you know, mission objective has been completed in some fashion or form. Okay, so maybe maybe uh, for this particular objective, for this particular mission, you say the Germans have 10 minutes to destroy this airfield and the Russians need to protect it for 10 minutes, right? So you would have like some sort of timer counting down and at the end of 10 minutes, if the airfield is not destroyed, then the Russians win. But if the Germans were able to destroy the airfield, then you need to have this logic to say, hey, the airfield has been destroyed. All right, so for now, though, I'll just remove that. That's fine. You don't necessarily need to have it for multiplayer games, but it's it's definitely a nice to have. All right, so this is logic. We're going to go ahead and group this. We're going to call this air, air field on destroyed logic. Actually, I do this destroyed logic. Boom. And there's our messages. And I'm just going to move this out of the way. Just something like that, just out of the way. And now it's set. You can do all sorts of other things to this. You can add ground effects, sirens. You can add explosions, whatever you want to do. You know, um, planes, whatever. That that's not what you asked. You asked how to set up static objects, and I think I've uh, gone on far, far too long. <laughs> on how to do this, and I probably talked way, way too fast. So if you do have questions, um, don't ask me. I, I don't have answers, but, uh, but do ask on the forms. All right, good luck. Uh, and if you have any questions, like I said, just let us know.